Hello and welcome. I know you're new, so come on in. I'm so glad you found me. My name is Russ, and after careful review of this last quarter, I do have both good and bad news for you. So please, take a seat. Let's dispense with the bedside manner and get right to it. You are stagnating. Please listen closely. I know you think you know everything there is to know about food delivery, whether you've just started or been doing it for a while. How hard can it be, right? You go to the restaurant, you get that bag, drop it off on the porch, and instantly you've made some money. That is basically how it is, but there's a lot more to it. In fact, I'm gonna give you a prescription to follow after we explore these three main points. After looking at the quarter, which apps paid you the most and which were the busiest? This is something that you should figure out for yourself. In my case, let's take a look. Starting from lowest to highest, you have Amazon Flex, 10% of my workload, then Instacart, Uber Eats, and then Grubhub with 32% of my work. Now, what about pay? That's a little bit different, right? Check this out. At the bottom, Amazon Flex paid 9% of what I made. Grubhub was next at 25%, Uber Eats came in at 30%, and wow, wouldn't you know it, Instacart. 36% of my earnings, the total that I made during that quarter, came from Instacart. This indicates that I do multi-app and I have apps from different industries. That way if one's slow, another is busy. What if something happens and you can't get on one of the apps? At least you have some others to work. So this quarter indicates that my work was broad and also which ones paid well. So I can focus on that in the future and you could too. Second, track all your expenses. It's not that hard. There are many apps out there that can help you do it, or you could just use pen and paper. The key thing is to know that when it comes tax time, that 1099 that you're gonna get from the company, it only covers the miles when you were actively delivering, accepting that order and dropping it off. But there are other miles out there that qualify. You're not out driving for fun. So if you track your own mileage, your mileage is going to be higher than what these apps report. This is going to help you because your car is expensive to operate. And so these deductions are going to reduce the amount of taxes you make. And more importantly, it's going to give you a true assessment of just how much you're using your car in light of the earnings that you're making. And I think that's gonna surprise you when we get into this next part. So for my quarter, I made a total of roughly $2,700. I did 205 orders and I drove 1,873 miles. As you can see, this averages out to $1,352 per order and $1.48 per mile. Is that good? Is it bad? I will say you should try to do anything over a dollar per mile and obviously higher is great, but if you look at my previous videos, there are considerations to decide miles or money and what types of miles, so check those out. And third, how are your earnings in light of your expenses? Do you know the IRS has already done the hard work for you? They can estimate the average per mile that it takes to operate your vehicle. Currently, it's 65 and a half cents. So how does this matter? Think about it, gas, insurance, depreciation, maintenance, including your tires, all come out of this figure. So if you're out driving a lot of miles, it's actually costing you, so you need to make much more than that to make it worth it. In my case, I drove 1,873 miles, so multiply that by 0.655, gives me $1,227 in vehicle expenses, and as I've already mentioned what that covers, so 2771 minus the 1227 gives me a profit of $1,545, and that's not including taxes. I did spend $438 on gas. So if you take 1227 minus that 438, that leaves $801. What about insurance? Let's say it's $100 per month, that would be $300. I did do an oil change during this time. California is expensive, that was $75. So $800 minus the 300 minus 75 gives you $425 to cover depreciation and tires. So I would say this is a very close estimate from the IRS. It is hard for me to be accurate on hours because I drive twice a week during the weekdays, not the weekends. 
So 13 hours for both of those days, and then times four gives you 52 hours per month. For three months, that works out to 156 hours. So $2,700 divided by 156, wow, 1776 per hour. And that's not including taxes or my expenses. So let's go back. Remember I uh, subtracted? So the $1,500 already including the expenses divided by 156, that works out to $9.90 per hour that I'm earning. And this sounds familiar in my previous videos. That seems like a really close number. So is it really worth doing food delivery? Am I stagnating? Are you stagnating? I will say you can make more than me if you do food delivery at nights and definitely on the weekends. I'm limited based on my availability to the weekdays, so naturally I'm not going to be able to earn as much as you can, and that's good news for you. We've all heard the phrase, a delivery per day keeps the doctor away. Well, my prescription for you is to go back and watch my previous annual earnings videos. In there I give you information so that you can learn from my mistakes and not repeat them. And it covers different industries. That's rideshare, food delivery, and grocery shopping. So let's get started with this first one.